from Baghdad to Brent East. When you think of that constituency in North London, what comes to mind? Maybe the so-called loony left of the 80s, who made Brent Council rather famous for a time, or more recently, the MP, Ken Livingston? Well, he's moved on and his successor died, and so Brent East now spells by-election. Sure, it is safe Labour, but with the government at sixes and sevens, it, nothing feels very safe at the moment, and so, as Max Cotton reports, Brent East is looking lively. This is what Brent East looks like. It's in northwest London, but I mean, look at it, it could be almost anywhere. And that's why this election is important. It could be anywhere. And the result is going to be used to test the temperature of the political waters right across the country. But Brent is also very ethnically diverse, and its political past has been uh, colourful. It's been called the People's Republic of Brent and Barmy Brent, and MPs here are rarely beige. Some still on the left, and some who used to be on the left. Brent East is a safe Labour seat. The Labour majority is 13,000 or so. In 2001, the Conservatives were second and the Lib Dems in third. But it wasn't always like that. Ten years ago, it was much more marginal. Before the Blair phenomenon, the Conservatives controlled the local council. This is a by-election. We're six years into a Labour government. In a place like Brent East, the Tories should be in with a chance. The Conservative candidate is Uma, local councillor and nurse. It's a good start, but she's reported as suggesting that she might not win. Now Uma's keen, and so's Ian. Instead of you interpreting how confident you are, I will be confident, all right? And I'm very confident we have a great candidate here. What's Uma your majority going to be, going to be a great Uma? member of Parliament when she gets in Thursday week. That's how confident I am, and I'm really pleased that I'm coming to support her today, and I'll be back again. Thank you. I am confident really? we're going to, look, to, to win. We're going to win, we're going to win with a massive majority. Right. Because I feel right now people are so fed up, they want a change. The Lib Dems win at by-elections like East German girls win at the shop put. And in Brent East, the Liberal campaign is larging it. Can I... Um, Ready? Can I ask you, yes, um, Mr certainly. Kennedy, uh, you say this isn't going to be a referendum about the, um, uh, about the war, but look, we've got to have this election leaflet here which says, Iraq, your chance to have your say. Is it a referendum on the war? No, it's not a referendum on the war. We're also giving people their chance to have say on the future of local post offices, health services locally, crime, all the sorts of things that we've been And surveying. a referendum on the war as well? And canvassing their view um, about the war. I think it's a referendum on trust, and that includes the war. There are lots of issues here that are important, and some of them are very localised, as Charles said, and some of them are national, and some of them are international. These days, Paul Boateng is calmer and more middle of the road. He's campaigning here with Labour's candidate, a clean-looking London Euro MP who lives in Surrey. The Liberals and the Tories paint Robert Evans as a right-wing frothing-at-the-mouth millionaire Blairite. His friends are quick to dispel the myth. He's a decent, um, traditional Labour values man. He voted against the war in Iraq, so he's prepared to stand up to the party machines, and he'll serve the constituency well. An endorsement like that from the popular Ken may endear Evans to the electorate in Brent, but he's aware that Labour are most likely to be judged on their domestic record. I'm saying what we've actually delivered, the progress we've made, and we're delivering, as I say, a brand new school. We're making progress all the time. I'm not, saying, not complacent at all, not saying everything's done, but we're moving in the right direction and we've made some real progress. We've made action really positively for the borough, uh, and I'm very proud to be continuing on that. The politics show has joined up with opinion leader research to produce what politicians love, a focus group. These people are real live Labour voters questioned under laboratory conditions. Personally, the way I feel is that they're trying to undo a lot of damage and it takes time and there is a noticeable improvement in the quality of life at the moment. You know, it is noticeable, it may, it may not be coming fast enough. But what about Iraq and Dr Kelly? With the Hutton inquiry, is it something you care about, something you read about or not? Well, it, 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 it comes down to the question of trust. Whether we trust the government, we see what, what happens with it, with it the end result of the Hutton inquiry. Uh, it was just a fact, well, we, can we trust this uh, present government or not? And there are other concerns. I'm suffering from spin doctoring and reforms overload. Um, I'm very maxed out on that, um, and it's becoming slightly boring.
and we're six years into the Labour government. How do you feel overall? I don't see any alternative, to be honest, any viable alternative. I can't see myself voting Tory. I mean, I do like Tony Blair, and I do trust him. I mean, although this Hutton inquiry has taken a, a bit of a blur of that. Um, so I do trust him. But, I mean, if, there, if something else came up... Yeah, really. My children are doing well. If I've got the facilities around me, good library, you know, all these sort of things, that's what, you know, then I'm quite happy. This ain't science, but two of these Labour voters say they won't vote. The rest will. Who stays home Thursday is going to decide the result. Now, the Greens and UKIP are standing in this election. There are 16 candidates in all, and a full list can be found at our website, news.bbc.co.uk. And finally, for those at the heart of the campaign in Brent, it's sometimes hard to remember that by-elections are actually very rare. So please, don't have nightmares. <laughs> we'll try not to. Max Cotton reporting there. When a hospital...